more baby birds are leaving the nest and showing up in the woods now in early July. In the last week here at Lake Meyer Park, I've seen, uh, in addition to this juvenile blue jay, uh, young uh, rose-breasted grosbeaks, red-bellied woodpeckers, and Baltimore Orioles, which is uh, great news. It's uh, nice to see that the birds are having a successful nesting season. And as long as the habitat is there, uh, they will uh, they will uh, benefit from that. Uh, this little uh, blue jay here is still in that uh, cute cuddly stage, so to speak. Uh, hasn't learned how to be a big bad bully yet. In fact, uh, this one was at uh, the bird feeding station at uh, Lake Meyer Park, and it was actually getting pushed around by a, a little black capped chickadee. So uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it uh, but when it grows up and uh, and uh, gets a little bit bigger. Uh, it will uh, probably turn the tables there and uh, and uh, keep the chickadee at bay. But uh, it is kind of fun to watch the the way the birds interact and uh, and learn how to live amongst themselves. These beautiful morning cloaks have been showing up in the woodlands of late, and uh, they are always a delight to see. Uh, the morning cloak is a, what's called a multiple brooded butterfly here in Iowa, and uh, the adults actually overwinter uh, down in the leaf litter or maybe uh, under uh, a slab of bark uh, on a tree where they will freeze and, and then uh, thaw out when the weather warms up in spring. Uh, they're oftentimes the first butterfly you'll see in springtime uh, after the snow melts in late March. Uh, and uh, so that's when uh, you might say the first generation gets going. And uh, now we've got, uh, again, uh, another hatch, you might say, coming out in uh, late June and early July. Uh, there could be even another one uh, yet uh, uh, going into the, the late summer and fall. But uh, the morning cloak, their caterpillars uh, are fond of uh, elm and hackberry leaves. Uh, so those would be some of their host trees, so to speak. Uh, by the way, over in... Uh, the UK, uh, the morning cloak goes by the name of the Camberwell Beauty, and uh, they definitely live up to that name. Country kids, back in the day here, uh, in uh, you might say a century ago, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, the country in uh, the countryside here, would have called them simply the yellow-edged butterfly. This rusty snake-tail male is a striking dragonfly to spot out in the field. Uh, their uh, peak flight season here in uh, Northeast Iowa is from uh, late June into early July. Uh, their nymphs uh, burrow down into uh, sandy substrates in uh, clear flowing streams, uh, like uh, trout streams around here. And uh, this, uh, this dragonfly would benefit from having a, a forest or grassland buffer uh, around the stream so that uh, uh, those uh, babies wouldn't be covered up by sediment after a heavy rain. But uh, anyway, the rusty snake tail is a name for the kind of the snake-like uh, color pattern that you see on its uh, abdomen there. If you see them in flight, they do look kind of uh, rusty or uh, reddish colored. Uh, and uh, so that's how they kind of get their name right there. The adults are ferocious little predators and uh, will eat uh, any little uh, bug uh, that uh, comes uh, kind of within striking range. So uh, look for the rusty snake tails uh, winding up their season now as we move into July.